Echo Fox is on fire, and I don't mean that in the good way. The sale of their LCS slot has fallen through. Amit Raizada, the shareholder who said some racist stuff, is still with the company, and now he's alleging that Rick Fox destroyed the org. Meanwhile, Rick Fox is saying that Raizada is a con man, and he's lying to Echo Fox fans. All right, let's do a quick recap because this shit is crazy. Echo Fox shareholder Amit Raizada used racist language in an email to Jace Hall. Riot didn't like that, and Echo Fox was put in a position where they had to either get rid of Raizada or sell their LCS slot. They couldn't get rid of Raizada, so they started the sale process. Kronky Sports and Entertainment, one of the largest sports ownership groups in the world who own the Overwatch League's LA Gladiators, among other major sports teams, offered to buy Echo Fox's LCS slot for $30.25 million. And then shit started to fall apart. On Friday, August 9th, Echo Fox sent out a press release stating that, quote, due to circumstances unrelated to Echo Fox, Kronky Sports Entertainment was unable to meet Riot Games' requirements for acquiring Echo Fox's LCS slot. With that said, Echo Fox retains the slot. Rizada's lawyers told me that that was because KSE's esports arm was sued by their business partner, Robert Moore, the CEO of Sentinels, the company that runs the LA Gladiators for Kronky. In case you're wondering what's happening over there, according to a report from ESPN's Jacob Wolf, Moore alleged that the Kronkies trying to buy the Echo Fox LCS slot violated a verbal agreement they had about expansion into esports. Since then, they've settled the suit, but won't be pursuing the Echo Fox LCS slot anymore. Basically, it's a mess, and either KSC pulled out because of the lawsuit, or Riot saw the lawsuit and wouldn't let KSC into the LCS until it got resolved. So now, Riot controls the sale of the LCS slot. But there are a ton of allegations about how we even got here. I talked with Amit Raizada on the phone for an hour, and he gave me his side of the story. Now, I want to preface this by saying that I also got a long statement from Rick Fox, which we'll get into later in the video. But know that Fox categorically denies everything that Raizada says, and goes so far as to call him a con man. I also want to preface Raizada's statements by saying that he owned up to using racist language and threatening language in his communications with Jace Hall and Rick Fox, as has been alleged several times. He even admitted to being in the wrong, at least when it came to the incident with Jace Hall. Riot made their statement, Raizada admitted to it, and no one's really calling what he said into question anymore. Instead, Raizada spent most of our interview alleging that Rick Fox is millions of dollars in debt and has screwed over Echo Fox. Now, I have a statement from Rick Fox where he denies all of this, but again, I'm gonna get to it after we go through the timeline. So, let's start from the beginning again. Way back in 2015, after Rick Fox decided to get into esports, Raizada says that he and Khalid Jones each invested a million dollars into Echo Fox, half a million each to buy the LCS slot, and another half a million each to fund team operations. You'll notice that he didn't mention Rick Fox in that funding. See, the way that Raizada tells it, Rick Fox didn't have any financial stake in Echo Fox when it was founded, and continued not to have any until October 2018. The way Raizada tells it, Rick Fox was given a small, token amount of shares in Echo Fox, and those shares were quickly diluted after a funding round. Really, according to Raizada, Rick Fox was mostly the company's brand ambassador. And if all this is true, I'm sure you'll agree, that's not what we were all led to believe about Rick Fox's relationship with Echo Fox. Here's the thing though, in a recent interview with Optic Gaming CEO Hector Hex Rodriguez, Rick Fox said that none of that is true. He says he spent his own money on the company, just like every other investor. This is another another lie that's out there that I've never put a dollar into Echo Fox, that's bullshit. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, we bought the slot, I put my money in mm -hmm. just like the other four people. Yeah. The slot then was purchased by, by um, e e another entity, mm -hmm. which became the entity that raised, that we yeah. raised. Everyone was out. And you went to work though too. And, oh, I spent my own dollars. I yeah. bought plane tickets, equipment. Yeah. Yeah. Like I got receipts, like all this stuff. Never, yeah. you know, never asked to be reimbursed. Yeah. Right, like, like thousands and hundreds. A lot of money. Jumping forward a few years, according to Raizada and documents that he and his legal team sent to us, in December 2017, Echo Fox borrowed $2.5 million from Twin Galaxies in order to pay for the franchise LCS slot. Now, if you don't know what Twin Galaxies is, they're a company run by Jace Hall that handles competitive video game records. They were also a major part of the failed H1Z1 league, which shuttered after just half a season last year. According to those same documents, Echo Fox continued to borrow another $2.5 million in Twin Galaxies throughout 2018, though Raizada didn't tell us exactly what those funds were for. These loans were allegedly secured by Echo Fox's assets, which means that if they defaulted on the loan, the lender, Twin Galaxies, would take control of Echo Fox's teams, their offices, anything that they owned, really. By summer 2018, Raizada alleges that Twin Galaxies ran out of funds, 
and went to their investors, including Rizada, and borrowed another $3 million secured by their loan to Echo Fox. That meant that if Twin Galaxies couldn't pay their $3 million debt back, the investors would take control of Echo Fox's loan and could collect on it whenever. This is super complicated, but in simple terms, Echo Fox owed $5 million to Twin Galaxies. Twin Galaxies owed $3 million to their investors, including Amit Rizada. When Twin Galaxies went bankrupt, the investors, including Rizada, took control of the $5 million debt that Echo Fox had. Now here's where things get weird. Rizada alleges that in June 2018, he and Rick Fox had a discussion that involved Rick Fox saying he wanted to get out of Echo Fox. Rizada sent this what appeared to be text between him and Rick Fox, in which Rizada recommends that Fox raise money to buy Rizada's share of the company, or else Rizada would have to sell his share to a guy named Stratton Sklavos, another major shareholder in Echo Fox. In these texts, Fox responds by saying that if Sklavos gained more control of the company, Fox would have to leave entirely. Rizada refers to this as evidence that Rick Fox wanted out of Echo Fox, though it seems to me, at least from reading these, that Fox only wanted out if Sklavos gained more control. Anyway, moving on to October, the ownership transfer actually happened. According to documents that Rizada sent us, Rick Fox and Khalid Jones formed a company called Axon, which they used to buy the ownership share of Echo Fox from Rizada for $5 million each. The documents say they were required to pay $1 million as deposit by October 26, 2018, another $4 million by January 5, 2019, and the remaining $5 million by June 1, 2019. Now, I want to stop the timeline to note that Rick Fox corroborates certain parts of this story. In his interview with Richard Lewis, Fox says that, quote, about eight months ago, he purchased a controlling interest in Echo Fox. I purchased uh, the controlling interest back from one of the original co-founders. And uh, it was at that point that I did that because of, of, uh, of a protective desire to not only protect the brand, but to protect the rest of the limited partners. He also says that once this happened, he, quote, pulled back the curtain to a mess. He reiterated this in his Hex interview, even going so far as to say that the people who were running the company at the time allegedly were driving Echo Fox to bankruptcy. I spent I spent my uh, more money, a lot of money, mm -hmm. to buy people out of control that were threatening to bankrupt the company. People don't know this story. They were threatening to bankrupt the company in the summer of 2018. And I had to put more of my money into the company to get it away from people that were going to drive it off the cliff. And when I got it in my hands, the state it was in, I've seen cars totaled that look better than this. All right, so let's roll back here for a second. The way that Rick Fox tells this part of the story is that not only did he put his own money into Echo Fox, he also spent a lot of his personal time working for and helping the org. Then, after one split of the LCS, the ownership group approached Rick Fox and asked him to step aside from operations so a more experienced business person could take over. Then Jace Hall came in as CEO, followed by Stratton Sklavos, who was also brought in to run the company. At some point during all this, Fox says he grew suspicious, and so he bought control of the company back and allegedly discovered a financial disaster on his hands. So Fox says that once he took control, the org had to start making difficult financial decisions to survive, like cutting players and staff. Fox also says in his interview with Richard Lewis that he made the first payment to Rizada on his purchase, which Rizada's documents also corroborate. Here is where the stories diverge again, though. Rizada alleges that back in December 2018, Echo Fox and Twin Galaxies both ran out of money. Do you remember what that means? Well, it meant the Twin Galaxies defaulted on their debt, which meant that the investors, including Rizada, gained control of Echo Fox's loan. All of a sudden, Echo Fox owed $5 million to Amit Rizada and other shareholders. Rizada says that there was a mutual agreement to turn Echo Fox's debt into senior preferred equity, which basically means that anybody who was owed money by Echo Fox got to turn their debt into ownership share of Echo Fox, and they got first crack at any new money that went into the company until that debt was paid. Meanwhile, according to Rick Fox, this only happened after Rizada put a metaphorical gun to his head. We were in the process of trying to raise capital at the same time. You know, we were forced to figure out how to keep this thing afloat. Echo Fox, Echo Fox negotiated with me to convert my debt to equity. It was not just my debt. Everyone says it was just Amit, Amit, Amit. It was Amit and others. And an additional $3 million or $4 million of new money that came in on top of, on top of my money. And we're all pro meta in there. And that's how the company's been operating for the last year. You can choose to believe either one. The stories are actually pretty 
pretty similar. It's just the tone that changes. At the end of the day, both seem to agree that it was the right move for the company at the time, since it allowed Equifax to get out of debt and allowed the business people to get the company back in order. All right, so here's another place where the stories don't quite line up. Rizano alleges that in late January 2019, Fox wanted out of Equifax once again. He sent us emails between himself and a lawyer, Greg Nelson, who says that Fox wanted to get out of Equifax to work for Twin Galaxies. This email chain also includes what Fox alleges was Rizada threatening him and his family. Now, Rizada says that it was merely a threat of lawsuit, not a threat of violence, which I suppose is definitely one way to read this email. Greg, frankly, I'm not retrading. If you are saying he is holding, assisting with an exit or whatever his fiduciary duty is, you can frankly go fuck yourself. You are one of the most unethical and unprofessional people I've ever met. No deal on anything. And if Rick does not do his duties, I'll personally fuck him and his family for the rest of my life in any way possible. Don't ever threaten me with him not assisting. I'm going to sue him and you over this. Once again, this doesn't make Raizada look like a paragon of good manners or anything, but I mean, he does threaten a lawsuit. Following this, in April, Raizada sent an email to Jace Hall that included racist language. Once again, that part is not in question. The email then made its way to the public after portions of it were published by Richard Lewis on Dixerta. In May, that email triggered an investigation into Echo Fox by Riot Games, which, according to emails that Raizada sent us, found four material breaches in Echo Fox's agreement with Riot. The first was failure to obtain consent for having over a million dollars in debt. Pretty self-explanatory. The second was failure to maintain at least $5 million in liquid reserves. The third was a failure to obtain Riot's consent for having over 10% of new equity in the company, which happened with the senior preferred equity that Rizada gained when he and others took control of Echo Fox's debt. And the fourth, the one we already knew about, was Rizada's racist language in his communications with Jace Hall. At this, Riot requested that Amit Rizada be removed from the company, presumably because it solved the latter two material breaches. Now, there are a lot of allegations about what happened with that, and I'm still trying to sort them all out and corroborate them. Until we have a video explaining everything that happened here, we can simply say that it didn't work out and Riot required the slot be sold. Meanwhile, in June, Rizada alleges that Fox refused to pay the rest of the money he owed Rizada for that purchase of a controlling share of Echo Fox, and Fox was sued for that. Rizada sent over court documents that show that a company called Eleven Stones is suing Rick Fox in Miami for $2.5 million plus the cost of the lawsuit. We asked Rick Fox for a statement on all of Rizada's allegations, and this is what he had to say. There is literally no limit to what Amit Rizada will make up and say in his quest to con money out of investors and to hurt me and my family. So what is the point of addressing anything he says from this point on? His credibility is now zero at this point, and my responses to his further lying just bring him more attention, which will in turn continue to motivate him to add more lies to his big steaming pile. Amit Raizada is currently paying a team of people to spread his lies and spread and damage my reputation. He has a PR company, lawyers himself and others, all coordinating their daily attack on me and the truths I have spoken. Amit hopes to confuse the public and hide his malfeasance and fraud in the disarray. Amit Raizada has expressed on many occasions that he thinks the gaming community is stupid and holds it in very low regard. He has fake paid Twitter accounts trying to bash me all the time and support his paid for self-aggrandizing puff piece article. It's all very easy to spot, and the community has already busted him a few times doing this. Amit also attempts to drag any news site he can into his web of lies, and the ones that refuse, he threatens to sue them. I already know he's threatened some people and sites with lawsuits and legal notices to quiet them down. He will continue to do this bully behavior. It is nothing new. Amit Raizada is attempting to use your newscast to push his lies and agenda against me. He wants you to help him create more fake counter argument out there. That is the purpose of his interview with you, nothing more. There's a lot more to Fox's statement, including a link to a lawsuit in which former business partners of Rizada's are suing him for wronging them through, quote, deceptive schemes. And they're alleging he participated in frauds, threats, and a smear campaign against them. I'm still working my way through this lawsuit, but you can be sure once I've made sense of it, we'll have another video for you about that as well. Fox points to the lawsuit and alleges that Rizada has a pattern of behavior, that he's doing the same thing to Fox now that he allegedly did to his former business partners. He goes on to call Rizada a con man and ends his statement like this. Quote, I have no such record or pattern of the kind of behavior Amit Rizada demonstrates. I am in esports because I love my son, the community, and the culture. Amit Raizada has demonstrated that he is here to exploit me and everyone else he can get his hands on. This is what he has a proven pattern of doing. I hope you don't fall for his con. So you can believe what he tells you or not. It's up to you and the audience. 
I'm through directly responding to anything he says. It's a waste of time. He's not important to me." End quote. Jumping ahead to last week, Riot announced that they'll be taking over the sale process for Echo Fox's LCS slot, but they'll be giving most of the proceeds from that sale to Echo Fox. From what I've been told by Raizada and his legal team, it wasn't an option that most of Echo Fox's shareholders wanted. Meanwhile, Rick Fox has said in both his interview with Richard Lewis and Hex that it was an option he was in favor of. On one hand, it's an open sale and Riot gets to pick the best partner. On the other, Riot doesn't have to pick the highest bidder, which might mean less money for Echo Fox shareholders. And that brings us to today, where we have two sides of the story. On one side, Amit Raizada, who has presented a ton of documents that support his side of the story, but clearly has an axe to grind in this situation. Meanwhile, on the other side, we have Rick Fox, who's categorically denying everything that Raizada says and says that he's trying to trick you, the Echo Fox fans. In the eyes of the law, one person is gonna be right here and one person is gonna be wrong. I really cannot tell you who that's going to be because, well, I'm not a US judge. What I can do for you is present you both sides and hopefully we can come closer to the truth. For now, make up your own mind. But you can be sure that we'll have more videos for you about this in the days to come. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.